So with uh, clip envelopes, I can draw in like a rhythmic feel. Down here. Okay, so I can create stutters in the audio. So you can have a lot more fun uh, because in production, you know, the ear is always looking for something to uh, entertain itself, you know, to provide more self-expression in the track. And that's what makes a really good pr production or remix. If there's something interesting going on from the minute the track starts until it ends that is satisfying the listening experience. Um, I like to use I like to use uh, live as a full blown wave editor. I haven't used a wave editor such as like Peak or something like that in years because a lot of the wave editing functions are simply right here. Uh, you can normalize, you can detune, uh, you can transpose a different sample, you can reverse a sample. All of these functions here are kind of uh, representative in, in a, a full-blown wave editor so it's really not uh, necessary to use a wave editor anymore. Um, a lot of examples here that I want to get to but I might have a problem indicating them because of this um, display that we have setting here. Um, now when you know, because I, I learned a lot of things using Ableton, and I'm always listening. And when I'm uh, teaching my class, a lot of the students will uh, come in and they'll play a track, and they'll say, "Well, how how was this how was this done? How did uh, Kanye West or, or any um, hip hop producer uh, do a certain trick?" And I have to provide a lot of answers. And if I don't know how to do it, then I have to come up with a workflow in Ableton Live. And um, I found that Ableton has not failed me with uh, duplicating or creating a, uh, an example of how certain things um, uh, take place. So I always like the uh, time stretched effect in a lot of early drum and bass um, recordings where you would hear like uh, really drawn out like time stretch effect. So here is an example of like a house track that I heard. And it really doesn't matter if I like the track or not. It's just, it leads me to like say, well, how how was this done? So here. I, was, I heard that and I was thinking, how was that done? And so I took a, I did a workshop in New York uh, at Dubspot and I just sampled myself saying Dubspot and I was wondering how that could take place. So uh, if we warp this, this is really, uh, okay, so now. Dubspot. And, okay, okay, let's see if we can. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, now here's a here's a nice little Ableton. So instead of sitting, dub spot, dub spot, sitting there dub and and, and dub hitting the space key to do that, I can assign that clip to uh, a keyboard on the computer by simply hitting the the key uh, command right here and hitting Q. So now every time I hit the dub key, spot, dub spot, the key, the Q key 
that uh, clip is going to launch. Now it's set to um, trigger at the beginning of every bar, but I'll change that to something like um, 16th so that uh, it triggers a lot faster actually. So here, now dub spot, dub, 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 dub spot. So when it was set to one bar, it has to play through the entire bar uh, before it re-triggers itself. See? Dub spot. Every time. Dub spot. I like that to be, I like that to take place a lot faster than that. Dub spot, dub spot. So now, so how that's done is we simply start dub spot warping that so here is like the spot and if I just drag that out you stop. okay so now that's on the wrong okay that's on the wrong warping mode so I'll change that to complex Draw that out. So here with the key. Dumb spot. As you can see that that's starting to dumb spot. And I can drag that further all the way until it dumb spot. Now there's the spot. The end of a uh, so dumb spot. So I'll put place a marker like right here and drag that out. And that'll give us Really nice, uh, dumb spot. Can you even go further than that so it can sound real ragga and, and drum and bass ish, I suppose you could say. So now, dumb spot. And I came up with this just because a kid in my class had asked me something. Totally unrelated. He asked me like how some type of stutter effect took place. And that sparked me to uh, learn something that was even unrelated. So, uh, re really cool um, thing to, ch you know, it's, it's, it's all, Ableton is always challenging me. I'm starting to use my voice a lot more. And you'd be surprised with what your own voice sounds like going through a vocal corner or sampling or detuning it or repitching it up. You'd be really interested. So even, I mean like, with background noise, just saying, and that was me saying that like, the, literally like, right in front of the computer in the noisy room and you'd be, you would be, really, you'd be really surprised to know what you could come up with uh, your voice. And here I'm saying, <laughs> That's just me saying that through a vocal corner, and, you know, can, you know, you, you, you know, you can really utilize your own voice in a lot of creative ways. Now, you know, again, you know, Ableton Live, it, it solves a lot of problems. Okay, now here is, uh, here was a remix situation where um, somebody gave me the vocals, but look, look what's going on, like, there is no left channel here, and there's only the right. And um, I wanted to use this section, so most people, when you know they they are faced with a, a problem, they don't even they. It's often uh, uh, interpreted that you would have to just move on because you couldn't solve it or know what the um, problem or solution to. It would be. So, here when we play that loop, I'm gonna bring you up. Didn't I bring you? It looks completely unusable at this point, where you see the right, you see the left channel, just completely unusable. I'm gonna bring you up. 
sitting, I bring you up. I'm gonna okay, but, but thanks to Ableton Live, there is a solution to working with um, problematic audio files. So when I go here and I go into um, audio effects and I go into uh, utility and the difference, apply the difference to it. Now, I'm gonna bring that. you up, didn't I bring you up? So here, uh, I take the warping off. So now, I'm gonna bring you up, didn't I bring you up? Now I got I'm a perfect left and right, now I have a perfect left and right feel. Now, why would somebody record their vocals like this? Um, a number of reasons. Um, could have been a mistake. Could have been the, the one and only take. Uh, could have been uh, a situation where the person was recording in mono to begin with. Um, it could have been mic'd up on a different um, console or, or channel. Um, but I'm gonna bring you so then I would record that to a new channel. Not MIDI, but.